Okay, so Sarah Banks, thank you for joining for this interview. Would you like to introduce yourself? What who yes. are you? What are you working on? Okay, well, my name is Sarah Banks and I uh, teach and research at the University of Durham in the northeast of England. And I work a lot on professional ethics in, in social work, but I'm also doing more and more work on participatory ethics, so doing participatory action research with community organisations in the locality where I live and looking at what are some of the ethical challenges in that, in that kind of research. Okay. And can you give some examples of those ethical challenges? Yes. yes. Well, I think the whole idea of a university doing research in partnership with small community-based organisations raises a lot of questions at the start about power. It's the, often the money comes and the university is the one who takes the money and then we have to share it out. And universities are very big bureaucratic organisations. Um, they often regard our community partners as research participants or subjects rather than equal partners. So they start to ask us to, to take care of them and protect them as if they were participants when really they're partners. So then we have to get into developing a partnership agreement and making sure that the money is shared out in an equitable fashion. Um, and there's a lot of issues along, along the way communities aren't homogenous entities so within any one neighborhood or community of interest there could be a number of different factions individuals or groups that may have conflicting views about what the research should be about how we should interpret it how we should write it up so one of the projects I'm involved with now has which is looking at community engagement in, in local decision making there's a number of different versions of whose community this is and whose history we're talking about mm -hmm. and what version can get written. So at the write-up stage we're now beginning to think about how can we write this together in a way that, that, that takes account of different, different values, different, different positions. So those are just a few of the yeah. issues that, that tend to come up in that kind of research. Right. It reminds me of the lecture of Joan Trotter yesterday. Yes. And the uh, question she raised about uh, care ethical research. What yes. is your response to that? Yes, I think what Joan was asking was how can we approach research as care ethicists and, and put into practice care ethics in, in doing research. And, and to me the answer seemed to be to do participatory action research um, consciously because it's a, it's a value-based approach to research. You're starting with a participatory worldview, which is a relational worldview really. It's about respect, responsibility and caring relationships between people who are partners in this, this project. Um, so I think care ethics is a very good approach to research ethics, as opposed to the more regulatory approach, which is based on abstract principles and rules and ensuring that we tick a few boxes before we then put the form we filled in our, in our drawer and pop out and go and do our research and forget about the ethical yeah. bits. Yeah. So the care ethics is about the everyday ethics who we are, how we embody the ethics in our, in our everyday work. So I think it's, it's very, very uh, appropriate actually for, for participatory research and equally participatory research in a sense could, could answer Joan's question. And I think it's interesting because someone like Joan is primarily uh, a, a theoretical researcher, although I think she's very practice oriented. Uh, that raises the question of how could, can philosophers political scientists and theoretical academics mm -hmm. do participatory action research. It's easier for, for me as, a, as someone who's going out and doing, we're doing empirical research, the community members are collecting data on social issues. But what about the academic who's, who's got a question about how do we study care ethics yeah. at a theoretical level with people who are not, not philosophers? And I think that's, that's equally possible. Yeah. Like, because I think in Holland you've got a good tradition of doing um, community philosophy, Socratic dialogue in partnership with people who are not the quotes professional philosophers. So I think that is an interesting challenge for us to, to take up. Um, one of the approaches that we use is co-inquiry groups. So you can, you're taking a question which might not necessarily be a question where you have to collect empirical evidence, a question that people in the group can answer from their own experience by bringing experience into the group or through theoretical debate, dialogue and, and study, so using some of those models of dialogical inquiry mm -hmm. to kind of change the way we, we look at philosophy and political questions um, 
thinking what are the questions that interest people who are outside the academy yeah. and how can we use language that's available. Mm-hmm. So I think the tendency is for you know, philosophy, even in the ethics of care, which is probably more accessible than most, still we're talking to each other a lot of the time about new developments, about you know, particular t- terms that we use, which people um, themselves can't necessarily understand, people who are not well versed in that, in that inquiry. So the more participatory research I do, the more I think about language and concepts and the way in which we have to, as it were, leave behind some of our academic language and our like, academic ideals and whatever, and, and speak it in a different, in a different voice. Yeah. Way. yeah. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Yes. A different voice yes. again. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Well, thank you very much for sharing your ideas. I think okay. we can continue yeah. speaking about that a lot. Yeah. And uh, thank you for participating okay. in the interview. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>